I, I got to get one of those like microphone condoms, you know, like Randy has. Like this? Yeah, I got to get one of those. I don't know why I have both. It, I mean, these windscreens are have you ever have you ever tried to like just blow through the windscreen and put your hand on the other side? You it it basically uh, eliminates all airflow. It's unbelievable. Oh wow, it's true. All right, so we got isn't that crazy? Like they're yeah. very effective. <laughs> Ask producer Chris has an own Arnold Palmer spike spiked. Yeah, spiked. Ooh. I was looking for one of those over the weekend. It's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. And I got a um, Mike's Hard Cranberry. So you guys are drinking normal drinks, but spiked. <sighs> yeah. I'm drinking lady drinks tonight. <laughs> yeah. Like a bunch of pussies. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yep. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now's the yep. time to hop on board. Uh, we, maybe we can make some promos for next week. You know, if we support whatever the right? hot trend is, we support it more yeah. than anyone else. Okay. You got MRI porn. Good. All right. Let's, um, let's get going. <laughs> oh, do we? Uh, no, I, I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. You know, Somebody put it in there. Somebody did. Okay. All right. Here we go. One, two, three. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 112 of the Ridge Dick and the Podcast. It is slightly better than mediocre. I am your host, I am Ben. Once again, back at you, playing with the music in my ears. That's right, Ray. Hey Ray, I was going to ask you something, I don't remember what. Oh, hey Ray, how often do you lose your phone? Do you lose your phone quite often? Like, did you just fall out of your pocket and disappear and then throw everything the rest of your night off? Because how do you lose your phone? Ray, what's going on, pal? Hey, um, I'm pretty sure I've never lost a phone yeah. because I would be useless without that, it. It literally. That's for uh, idiots. It's like an extension of my body. Right? People who lose their phones. <laughs> yeah. are, are, I mean, how do you, right? Hey, ask producer Chris. Thank yeah. you for joining the show tonight. Yeah, thank you. Live and in thank studio. You. Have you ever how, lost a phone? Have you uh, ever lost a phone? I, uh, you know, I've had some days where it's been uh, rough. Yeah. And today's been a rough one. Yeah. I, um, I think I've lost it like three times <laughs> today. I found it every time, but okay. you know, it's okay. Crank that volume down. Okay. All right. Just a little bit. Okay. Uh, sorry. so yeah, tonight, tonight in studio is, um, assistant producer, Chris, who, uh, we shortened that to ask producer, Chris, yes. he, he is with us. Uh, and we are late tonight, uh, for, Wait, for many reasons, right. but most of which is that, um, he was sitting on my couch and he was using his phone. And then my wife said to him, Hey, the printer's broken. Uh, it guy, can you fix it? And ask producer, Chris said, I sure can. So he got up. I fixed it. Well, actually, the wife ended up fixing it. No. First off, I pointed out the issue, and then she took the paper. Okay. So well, she right. didn't know that there was a piece of paper there. Well, so yeah. I fixed it. Well. I mean, so I get paid money. I right? mean, as much as I don't want to give her credit for things, she she pulled the paper out. Anyways, uh, then yeah. asked producer Chris Ray is looking through his pockets and can't find his phone. And we spend the next – I don't know what, 15 minutes 15, five, when, when yeah. we're already running late because the, you know, the wife needs to go take care of some things before we can come down here, but she needs to help him find his phone because I don't know if you know this, but ask producer Chris and my wife are related, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's crazy. It's a crazy nice. shit. Like we yeah, just, okay. we just literally found so out like yeah. comes together. two days ago. Yeah. Um, so crazy, anyway. crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, so I said, I said, Hey, ask producer Chris, why don't you just call your phone and we can find it that way. And so ask producer Chris, Dials his phone number, Ray. And um, then he says, oh, it's on silent. I, I always have my phone silent. Yeah. It's it's just a thing. I always have on silent. Guess where the phone was, Ray? In his pocket. Oh, God, I wish. In the, it was probably in the couch. <laughs> no, it was probably in the couch. It was, it was underneath a little pillow that was next to the printer. Oh, yeah. As, it, as makes logical sense. It, it happens, you know. I make mistakes. I'm human. So... <sighs> I don't know. So that's where we're starting tonight, buddy. How are you, Ray? What's what's going on, man? What's what's it like out in California these days? Uh, I'm good. Uh, let me we'll take a quick step back. So, Chris, uh, you know, I have an IT degree. I don't use it at all, so I'm nice. unpracticed. But uh, we, we can make this IT 
IT cast. Yes. Um, and, and <laughs> nerds, you know, just to, just because there's a lot of weird stuff going on these days, we don't need to get into that, but stereotypes exist for a reason and not to make you self conscious, uh, ask producer Chris, but you definitely got the IT arms going on. Yeah. Which is like a, a definitely like, you know, you know, it's just, I don't know no, what to do no with No person though, in IT yeah. ever has defined I, I don't, definitions I, of muscle. My wife yeah, is going to say, you're never having asked producer Chris on the show it's again. Fine. You need it's okay. to settle down. <laughs> All right, I know it's exciting. I said I didn't. I didn't have it's to show up here. I could have done this from my from my house and annoyed my parents. Maybe so. you can do it from the cottage next door because I don't. That's, a, that's a funny <laughs> joke. Let's not get into no, that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, so all right. So the, um, yeah, go ahead. Buddy. But I'm uh, sorry. but California, we're doing good. We have commercials on the radio saying we, we've flattened the curve. Let's continue to mm. to keep the curve flat and stuff like that. Mm. Um, whereas everyone else apparently is. Uh, they're going for a second curve or something like that. I don't know what's going on out oh, there. God. Yeah. It's, um, it's, and I don't really care because we're good in California. <laughs> so you know what? Weather's nice. Ray, I mean, I, let me tell you what. Like I was critical of our stupid ass governor here in Connecticut. Right. And I was really mad at all the stuff he was doing. Mm-hmm. But we're on. We we hit phase two early. I ate inside of a restaurant today. All right. Nice. I don't know if you can do that, but I did. And it was great. I was the only person yeah, there eating a delicious bowl of ramen. <laughs> mm-hmm. The uh, the hot pot places are still nice. closed though. Yeah, they're closed down. I called. I called the phone number. It's like, oh, this phone number is disconnected. Yeah. Like temporarily disconnected. Like, holy shit, you can do that. Like, I didn't, I didn't know. Uh, but yeah, no. There's a couple places that seem to be getting hit really, really hard. Uh, but then some data guys like going into the numbers, and maybe it's, I don't know. Maybe the cases are rising, but the age is going down. Anyways, so we're going to stay away from politics tonight. Hey, ask producer Chris. You have a list of topics yeah, you wanted to yeah. talk about. Why don't you start rattling off some of those topics? Ooh. <laughs> Uh, we talk about George <laughs> Floyd. Yeah. Um, the riots. Yeah. Um, Here's your target. Oh, target. sorry. Uh, I'm not used to this They're thing happening. Yeah. Yes. Um, what has Trump done? Yeah. What has the media done? Mm-hmm. Um, so everything mostly right and everything wrong. we're going to talk about politics. I think, right, okay. I think that's what. So, Ray, yeah, yeah. the reason we're doing this tonight, Ray, is that, uh, mm-hmm. ask producer Chris, he texted me. When did you text me last week? I've been texting you for a while. You've been texting me for a while. Like we we went years out talking to each other, and all of a sudden, like you know, so he texted me. He's like, "What do I need to start a podcast?" And I said, "I don't know. You need a microphone, and you need an audio program to record your shit, and you need to be interesting and a charming personality." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so he said, oh, "I was thinking uh, maybe starting one." I'm like, "You know what? Why don't you come to the basement? All right, we'll sit in the studio together, and I'll show you what it's like to podcast." And so this my man, he, he writes up a bunch of topics here that he wants to talk about, right? So much. And I get this list after I have conversations with a few of our listeners. All right. <laughs> and some of our <laughs> listeners have been uh, have been a little uh critical of our of our um I wouldn't of our of our topics of late with guests, you know? Um so so ask producer Chris says he wants to talk about George Floyd, and I'm gonna tell you what, buddy, I'm gonna look at you right now. I'm saving your job right now, okay? Because you, no matter what you say, it will be wrong to the internet. All right? So what we're going to do, we're going to do, do this a little differently. I know all you have right, topics, all right. Yes. right? I know you have your bullet points. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. As things come up, maybe you can get into them a little bit. Yeah. Right? But you got to understand, you talk a lot. Oh, I do. Yeah, you do. I so talk a lot. I'm going to have to cut you off at some point. Yes, all I right. need to be censored. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, what, what, Ray, <laughs> what I did in, in anticipation of this is that uh, Ask Producer Chris came over earlier. This I'm going to say that way too much. That's going to be so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we, we he, he, was, he came over after work and we went and we got pizza. We like, picked up pizza for the family. All right, because you know I treat my my nice. I treat family right. And um, as we were driving to and from the place, uh, we recorded a Patreon bonus episode, a car cast, if you will, and I let him talk about politics. Nice. Yeah. So since you can't okay. get your part of the Patreon bonus episodes done because your baby is coming near to your control room, uh, we'll be releasing this one <laughs> <Yeah>. instead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, to, to recap that. Yeah. So we've, uh, the, the little guy's a little too big for sleep in, uh, in the room with my wife and I. So he's commandeered this room. So uh, I don't really have my own room anymore. Goddamn, goddamn children. Uh, but uh, on a positive note, I had a talk with our real estate agent today oh. and we're, uh, we're getting, getting kind of close to, to find an actual house now. 
um, there was a lot of uncertainty and, you know, I, I don't need to get into all that, that bullshit, but, um, you know, we're, we're looking. So one of these days, uh, we're looking for a place that has a den and that would be nice. And I get my own soundproof it or something like that own, own room yeah you know mm-hmm. or something with a basement where i could just you know, sex dungeon yeah, well that's what my old basement used to be the liquor fueled basement was the sex mm-hmm. dungeon. you remember that yes yeah i do yeah. yes uh, as that was a great basement very sexy he was, was he was good. there for one episode dungeon-y. too i forget which one but he was yeah i was there yeah him and producer ryan came came to one all right so let's go around the room ray uh we, we're recording on a different night and our chat room is empty which is fine i don't have to pay attention but if you want to get in on this, it's bit.do slash TRDS1. We do this. Ray, maybe we could think about moving to Fridays. What do you think? Can you do that? Good. Yeah? We could, yeah. All right. Maybe we could have asked producer Chris. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter to me. <laughs> we're going to hate that. All right. So, Chris, what's yeah. been what's been going on in, in your week this week? Anything interesting? Any uh, fun stories to tell? Uh, you fixed a printer today. I you, did. You lost I your phone. Lost my phone. Um. Probably lost my phone a few more times. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just been working, you know, mm-hmm. the usual stuff. Working, working from home. Working from home, yep. I work home every other week, and then the other week I go into work. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been, uh, <laughs> it's been a wild ride. Yeah. Uh, and I'm eventually moving out of where I'm living now because I'm slowly losing my mind. Yeah. Um, Hey, let me ask you something. Yes. Okay. You recently have been tested for the coronavirus. I have. Can we that talk about good. that? Yeah. Yes. Do you want to talk about like I, I want yeah. You want to know like what happened? Yes, absolutely. Cuz right. cuz we haven't really talked to anybody. Ray, have you been tested? No, right? I have not, yeah. but I heard real fast that that locally they do free antibody testing. So I I, I kind of want to check that oh, out. Sure. Let me know how that goes. Yeah, I I mean that's we, that's like a permanent thing, right? Yeah. Well, maybe. Who knows? Is there, it's changing all the time depending on what the narrative well, is, really. Yeah. True. So, ask producer Chris. Tell us about your coronavirus test. I mean, one, I, I one, I don't really believe in the whole corona thing. Okay. All I right. think it's all right. put that but, aside, please. But, okay. Some okay. people do when they get offended. Okay. Sorry, but um, it was uh, it was weird because I was told that I could have been in contact with someone who uh. Could have, or he, the person was tested as positive. Mm-hmm. So, um, someone was like, Hey, you need to go test it, get tested. I was like, Okay, cool. I'll get tested. Um, I got there and the doctor talked to me and he had a big, um, Q tip. Oh, thank like, God. Big, like a big, like it was going like three, four inches oh, deep. Jesus Christ. And I looked at him and I was just Honestly, like, Was it all the fuzzy part? No. Well, like, no. was it that much? It was like, it was, the, it was, okay. no, it was the regular size cube tip and there was just like the stick. So I looked at him and it was like, all right, so that's going into my nose. That's scary. And he's like, yeah, I just had to get to this red line, which is like, like four inches or whatever. <laughs> so I was like, all right. And he's like, oh yeah, I got to do this twice. Oh no. And I'm like, oh, all right, cool. <laughs> you know, that's, that's awesome. Also thing is I'm not a big, um, uh, I don't swim and I, I like, I, I've never swam. So like his way of describing it was, oh, just imagine you're underwater. And I'm like, okay, you're talking to the wrong person to say that because I'm not a swimmer. Yeah. So he then just sticks it right up. Just like, he says, put, <laughs> le- lean your head back and I'm just going to do it. Holy I'm like, shit. hey, Ray. And he just d- go, takes it and just goes full, like deep. Right. Yeah. Lean like, your head back. Ray. Lean, yeah. Just, just take it deep. Yeah. Take it deep, dude. <laughs> I'm, that's, that's I'm what not sure saying. if we have another adult film and star then, on right now or if this is actually what you're describing, but it's, it's very, very erotic. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it was. Um, and, uh, he did it twice. And, um, then he was like, did he do both nostrils? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With the same Q tip? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. One of each? Was I think there was two cubed. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I blacked out a little bit. I don't know. Um, it was crazy stuff, though. And it <laughs> happened. Um, and then he was like, I'm done. Did you, you feel shame go. afterwards or guilt? Slightly. Yeah. yeah. A little, okay. little, little, little guilt. Yeah. Um, Were you wiping the lube away? Yeah. Um, and then right after, I went to went back to work. Because I had to go to in the office that day. So I was like. Ray, have you ever had your prostate examined? Nope. I no. have not. Yeah. See that's 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 an old man's thing, but actually, when I was younger, have than you? Me, yeah, you, you sound you like did. you were about to go down that. Yeah, I had to get that done once. Yeah, but but you're th- doesn't happen when you're like 50? yeah. No, I was having an issue. So the, the, the urologist oh, wanted yeah, he wanted to get in there. Um, and it's there's a lot of lube involved, <laughs> and there's a lot of I shame. Used lube. Yeah, 
Um, and if you never, you feel you can't get that lube out until you get, take a shower. It's terrible. All right. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. Isn't there a lot of pooping beforehand? Like, don't they try and clean you out? Uh, no. No, there is none of that. They're oh. just, uh, hey. <laughs> oh, well, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, did you have a male or a female doing the examination? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, had a, I had an old, uh, old distinguished gentleman. Old dis- See, yeah. now to mm-hmm. me, that would be the least awkward. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. I was going to say that. Well, well okay. Right. N- not to get, not to get gross. All right. Not to get gross, but you know, sometimes you go into these things, not knowing it's going to happen. And sometimes you do a few things beforehand yeah. that are just normal bodily functions. And it's like, uh Oh, mm-hmm. really? You oh. want to, you want to get down there right now? Cause yeah, you know, I could have, no, I, just, yeah. extra I could be more amazing. fresh. Right. But I guess I'm not. Yeah. yeah no, so, <laughs> Well, you're in a compromising position. Some, some, an older gentleman, you kind of go, hey, he's probably seen a lot of shit. Yeah, literally. Uh, literally. Yeah. So who cares, right? <laughs> uh, whereas like, you know, a younger dude, you're kind of like, oh, this is almost like this guy could be my friend. Like this, this is ruining that opportunity. Yeah. Or like uh, an attractive young lady, then it's really awkward. You're like, well, that blows that chance. I mean, I know I'm married, but well, she's into blows it. any potential she's chance. She's into that sort of stuff. Yeah. Right? So. You don't, yeah. you don't know. <laughs> We don't know, Ray. True. Maybe that's why she's in the business. Yeah. Okay. So what else is going on in your life, ask producer Chris? Um, nothing? Nothing really that interesting. Yeah. I mean, I've been pretty much home, just like every other human being in this country, I feel. Yeah. You know? tr- now that it's, things are opening up, I think, yeah. p- since I can't go see Chris or see in New York anymore, Ray, until New York is, you know, t- mm-hmm. until New York gets its own vaccine, <laughs> I might have to do mm-hmm. like stuff, bonus <laughs> stuff with, with, with this Chris. This Chris, he's he's more um, yeah. he's more politically aligned with me, so we we don't have to argue about nonsense either. So, anyways, yeah, yeah. Do you have anything more Should you want to add? No, not really. Okay, well, not right now. We'll get there. No, we'll get to some of that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. All right, Ray. I don't want to go overboard. No, you know. Please don't. I'm not. All right, that's the thing about podcasting, and I'm glad you're here tonight because we get to learn together. Mm-hmm. Is that um. You know, you, you don't want to hammer your controversial opinions, and and I I understand they you know to me they're not controversial. Maybe to Ray, you know, there's a lot of people they're not, but because it's the internet, and I'm because sensitive. everybody's so yeah. so crazy right now. And, yes, you know, a guy Sen- got sensitive. Mm-hmm. The guy had to apologize for wearing a, a News Network's T-shirt. Yes, and the apology wasn't even good enough. Yeah, yeah. So that coach, I mean, <laughs> everything is insane. So stupid, insane right now, Ray. I. I'm not even putting anything on the Twitter anymore besides, hey, there's a show out and we're doing a show because, God forbid, they're even going after wrestlers now, Ray. Like, I don't know what happened. Like, the Everybody. floodgates over. Everybody's getting accused well, of everything. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> unless, unless, like right now, honestly, it's either everything's negative or look at all these people supporting Black Lives Matter, mm-hmm. which, you know, which is – yeah, I mean, honestly, it's a it's a good thing. We we need to be open minded. We need to be supportive, just in general, and and make progress, right? But um, it is interesting that some of the stuff that people are doing is like, I, they're reporting on it as if it's uh, the greatest thing that anyone's ever done. And I'm like, yeah, that was that was really that big of a deal. They're just basically saying we support Black Lives Matter, which isn't doing anything. So I don't know why it's a news but yeah, you can't say that. that. Just be really, God. yeah. Uh, Ray is expressing saying, his like, we, own opinion. Like, he does not reflect. I the support it. Of like as if that's yes. newsworthy. Yeah. Like you shouldn't have to say it anyway. So going on to let's talk uh, the effects, the side effects of coronavirus. Here's some cool stuff that that uh, be political. Has, has come around. Okay. You can get political. I'm, I'm here. One. The first one: party parades. So this is what happened uh, middle of May. Uh, it's about a month ago now. We it's been uh, we've been busy. Yeah. But for my kid's birthday, right? So my my wife and kids, their birthdays are all three days in a row in the middle of May. So coronavirus is occurring. So we only invited over the closest family members. And then outside of that, we said, hey, if you're uh, up for it, just drive by, honk your horns in your car. If you feel like it, uh, drop off a present or something. But, you know, uh, just just swing by. And we got a little sign, put it up front, said happy birthday on the, on the lawn. And uh, holy balls. We were only doing that for like an hour. We just gave people an hour window. We probably had like, I don't know, double the amount of people that normally show up to a party. Wow. That's uh, an easy party to do. Just tons of people. Yeah. Okay. Tons of, tons of people. 
we did get a cake. We cut it up and just started serving it in little, you know, plastic or not plastic, but to, like the paper to bowls, the parade? you know, disposable. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they, they took them. Um, but we basically just like handed out cake and they drove. It was like a procession of just cars. And you're like, Hey, how's it going? Hey, nice to see you. Hey, thanks for the present. Want some cake? And, and now, and then it was done. There's no mess to clean up. We got a shitload of presents. You didn't have to worry about kids running around destroying stuff. It was fantastic. And we're like, why don't we just do this every year? <laughs> so that's a positive side effect to, uh, to all that's going on. Um, the other one was the booze fairy. Uh, I think I might have started to tell you about this, but yeah, I probably wouldn't pay attention. Have, have you seen this thing? Like, I remember you telling me about the booze fairy. <laughs> so basically, all these people—it's uh, like Facebook groups or something like that. I don't know. My wife's involved in it. I just reap the benefits. But you go in these groups, and it's just like a pay it forward type of deal. Except they're like, well, "What do you like to drink? And what do you like to eat?" And so basically, they'll go out and just buy a bunch of shit that you like, and just uh, drop it off at your door. For free? And so you'll just be sitting at home. Do you pay for it? Yeah. Really? <laughs> no. So you just go and you just put your name on there and some stuff you like. And I mean, we we had like, I don't know, half a dozen people just drop stuff off. One of them was for the kids, just the kids only. And, you know, they, they had like little kid drinks in there, whatever, soda or something like that. Sparkling waters and stuff. Um, but it was, uh, it's pretty entertaining. And so we, we decided, hey, you know, we, we had enough people drop off stuff for us that we actually put together a couple little things. But it's kind of an interesting little deal. So you just go out and, uh, kind of like, like I said, pay it forward. Just, I don't know, doing nice stuff, yeah. which is interesting with all the people afraid of coronavirus and they're willing to just accept food from strangers, someone that you didn't even know who <laughs> dropped it off and consume it. But we've been doing that all our lives and suddenly yeah, it's not okay. There. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's the worst. I know, right? Oh, I hate it. Oh, man. Uh, Ray. But yeah. Ray, I, um, um, what, what yeah. you got? You doing something? No, I was just open to be. I got tons of little things we could talk about, but go go for it. It's uh, it's weird not having a dog, Ray. <laughs> oh, I bet, huh? Is it quieter? It's it's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of good things not having a dog, right? It's quieter. I don't have to worry about the old time. man. You know, I don't have to you know make sure he goes out before I go to bed. That's a weird thing though, because I got into a habit of you know the letting him out before I go to bed or letting him out in the morning or him just being there. It's it's like quite an adjustment. Like I have nobody barking at me when I'm mowing the lawn now, and that feels weird. It's very quiet. It's very quiet when yeah. I come here now. Yeah, he's, he's it's not, very strange. He's not limping around the house, yeah. nails clacking. So it's it's mm. quiet. Yeah, but it's weird. It's weird. You know what we did get though, Ray? As um, uh, when um we we put him down the Sunday before the last episode. Okay, so uh, we're at mm-hmm. two weeks in a, two, two weeks and almost two weeks ago. And the next day, my wife called and said, hey, I know we're not getting his ashes or anything, but, uh, you know, can we get the paw print? Right? And they're like, oh, they just left with the dog's body. I'm sure we could do that. So, you know, they take the dog's paw and they put it into like a piece of clay and take a the paw print, right? So you get a little mold of the paw. And so I'm thinking, wait a second. I mean, that, that could be anybody's dog. Yeah. Right? I, like, I don't have... I don't have another mold of his paw print to compare it to. I don't probably don't have any pictures of his paw <laughs> to look at, right? I spent way too much time trying to figure out. Ray, I swear to God, I took the paw print. First, I tried to get my cats to smell it, and they didn't want to. And then I started looking through pictures of my dog, and I found like the last picture I took of him, I could see his paws on it, and I started looking. They're too far away, but I started you know, zooming in on his paws to try to see if they match up. And I figured out it was a left paw. <laughs> And then I just said, you know what? I just have to believe, man. Like it's like Santa Claus. I just have to believe yeah. that it's Buster's paw. Um, we we looked up the the website of the company that did it, and they do. Um, they have like several pet cemeteries throughout you know Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, uh, and they seem pretty reputable. And uh, all the different ways that they keep track of your dog for the ashes and stuff. So I'm pretty sure it's Buster's paw. But mm-hmm. not a hundred percent sure. So I got this paw up on my on, on my on the what that on the shelf. We got to put a picture of him next. But there's a paw and there's a rainbow bridge poem or some. Not, I don't know. But yeah, it's weird. Uh, you know, yeah, moving on. Like, you know, the, the weird thing is, like, I feel like he's missing all this, right? Even though he's just he's a stupid dog and didn't know what was going on, especially at the end when he's kind of losing it. I, <laughs> I feel like he's like he's missing. Things that are happening, like oh, they, the cat's got new litter, Buster, and you're not here to see it. You know, <laughs> we dropped the sausage on the floor. I'm sorry, you're not here to pick <laughs> it up, right? 
you know, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you do know that it, more than more likely than not, the the company that that does the whole paw print thing. Oh, God. They probably just have a bunch of templates. You, you know, they, they, they bulk produce them. I mean, them. God. Like, I have, you know, not that I have any friends time. to begin with. No, they probably – <laughs> they probably do they, – they probably actually do that. Um, but that's interesting. I mean, it's, it, it couldn't be that hard, right? Um, I mean, when you're in what? Kindergarten, first, second grade? You can do little uh, clay – what do they – I don't know what they are, but you, you bake them, right? Like little yeah. clay creations. So, you know, for a company to be able to do a paw print and harden it, eh, it's not that hard. If you can do it in first grade, they can do it as a, as a money, legitimate money making business yeah. uh, for your, your deceased pet. Ray, you see this man sitting next to me? Ask producer Chris. Oh, he's coughing. I got oh, him on no. his cough. I, I do see him. Yeah. Guess how old he was when I first met him? 11. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Take- 24. No. One more. Uh, uh, 16. Jesus, right. Not even close. How old were you, asked producer Chris? Wasn't that like two? He was two. Two. He was two. Oh, geez. See, this young man, he was two. He was in diapers. I remember the first time I ever saw him, he was in a, he had a stupid pacifier in his mouth with his weird curly blonde hair. He doesn't have blonde hair now. Yeah. He's looking up at me, just a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's true good times yeah oh shoot that's, so that's who old. did i meet when they were two that i'll be doing a podcast with in a few years oh no <laughs> oh no here's the thing uh, you know I, that's a scary thought I, I love this guy right he's been he's like a brother to me for real because he's i'm all he's ever known like the, he, i go into his pre-memory all right he doesn't know a life without without old rem dickman involved okay but man, I couldn't stand his ass up until maybe yeah, was he was like, pain. yeah, until maybe he turned like 21 or 22 when he finally yeah. became cool. But from two to 20, he was just like the biggest asshole. I think once I got to, went to college, I think I was better. He, mm-hmm. he turned a corner. Yeah. But in high school, I knew. Yeah. Before high school, I was. I was a There's this one time that uh, we went to a Yankees game, fit myself, rest your soul, fit, uh, canoe accident, tragic, dead, uh, fit myself and ass producer Chris. We went to a Yankees game. And we're driving down. Kid doesn't say a word. Like, Fit and I are trying to talk to him. He's got nothing to say. He's sitting in the back, just moping around, looking out the window, whatever. All right. We go down to the Yankee game. We, we meet up with Chris OC. And, and ass producer Chris is still being kind of an asshole. So Chris OC thinks he's being an asshole to Chris OC. So Chris OC turn, turns into an asshole to ass producer Chris. It's a lot of Chris's. I'm so sorry. All right. So they don't, they don't get off on the right foot. All right. And they haven't met again since. I'm, I'm sure they would get along fine now since, you know, since yeah, Chris, I probably wouldn't have an yeah, issue with them. Since he's cool now. Anyways. So I was pretty cool then. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the game, the game ends and we go home. And it's Fit and I in the front and, and this Chris in, in the back seat. And then he starts talking. It's a two-hour drive with traffic, two and a half hours or it was. And he starts talking. And then he doesn't stop talking. And like Fit and I, it's like it's like midnight and I'm driving on 95 and I'm tired. And he just keep going and going. I'm looking at Fit I'm like, dude, he won't shut up. And Fit's <laughs> like, I know he won't shut up. Like, what do we do? He just kept talking and talking and talking. It's like, dude, that's enough. We don't even want to hear it anymore. It's like, it's 1230 now. You're being, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so Once you get me going, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm there. I could be quiet, but also, also I can talk for hours. Yeah. So. Well, he used to be really into uh, Fit. Um, yeah. But then Fit died. Uh, Rest in peace. Yeah. yeah. It's sad for everybody. So sad. You know. uh, all right. So Moment of silence. we got Father's Day coming up, Ray. And I don't know if you know this, but Father's Day is bullshit. Mm-hmm. And I hate Father's Day. Yeah. Um, I hate I hate all those stupid holidays that uh, make things very uh, inconvenient and uncomfortable for my family. <laughs> I don't even want to celebrate. I just want to be done. Yep. I hate I hate the Hallmark file holidays. And then you got to go out. And now Corona times, everybody's weird. Like my kids literally think they're going to kill my parents if we go visit them. Uh, yeah. I don't know how you feel about Father. Are, do you? Do your? Does your family treat you well on Father's Day, Ray? Um, not really. <laughs> I mean, they, they don't. Nothing's bad, but I mean, you, you know, no one, no one does anything that great. It's just another day with a, like a little emphasis on like, oh yeah, uh, Happy Father's Day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I'm the same way. 
Yeah. I don't care about holidays. It's just like, it's another day. See, that's a product of his family is that nobody really gives a shit about holidays except Christmas and birthdays. Which I don't even care about Christmas. Yeah. I'm like, I'm a very like, I don't, it's just another, like, I don't. I mean, you don't because you don't care about anything really, but there's other people in your family. I have no soul. It's so sad. Yeah. All right. Uh. (laughs) <laughs> what I'm saying is I don't I don't like it when I'm, I'm, I'm dreading the next two days because you're going to yeah. be terrible and I'm just going to be angry when we do this again next week <sighs> okay all right Ray Ray what else you got bud what else you got yeah. because we have we do have voicemails we have oh god we have Mr. Porno Man returned um, one of those voicemails might oh, be nice. an advice I'm not totally sure uh, but it looked like it and we have some, maybe some dick of the week we can do and maybe we'll get to some of uh, Ask Producer Chris's topics. But, again, uh, these are topics that he is not allowed to have an opinion on because of his – I mean, look at him. He's not allowed to have an opinion. He's a male, first of all. Yep. And yeah. No opinions he, allowed. He has no right to comment on other people's struggles. Yes. No. Yeah. I'm, pri- I'm yep. privileged. Not at all. I just want to say that um, – um, <laughs> So privileged. Uh, no, I do, this is going to come out wrong. I just want to say uh, you, the listener, you, Ray – Chris, everybody in the chat room, uh, yeah, how about that? Wow. How about that? It's, that's every, uh, that's everybody. Wow. I'm probably going to edit that out. I'm going to edit that out because it's going to come out wrong. (laughs) Fuck. I just, I just got fired from a job. (laughs) Dang it. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, have you heard the, um, so this is kind of along the lines of the party parade, but have you seen like what people are doing for like. Uh, high school graduations and stuff like that. Oh, um, are, are they? Are yeah. you talking about the pictures in the in the fields that look like monuments to dead people? No, no, no I didn't see that. No, I just that? had an so, experience. So I was driving down the town I work no, in. Yeah, what is that? And on one of the town greens, there was, there was a whole bunch of pictures lined up, and I'm like, oh my god, did a whole bunch of people just like die or something? Because it oh, looked like they're about. attributing <laughs> a bunch of dead people. And it, but it was it was the graduates' class yeah, photos. Yeah, no, I I no, Pete, is that the the town that I live in? Um, they're do kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. At the uh, yeah at the high school. Um, it's all over the shoreline. Yeah, it's all yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. I'm like, I'm like, okay. oh my god, did all those young people just die? Some oh oh, it's it, graduation. Yeah. <laughs> it does look like like a cemetery. Yeah. It's yeah. like, ooh. what are they doing for you, Ray? Oh, so I had to go to this job site a week ago, and as we pulled in, hadn't been there yet. So just trying to find our way around exactly how to get through the parking lot and all the stuff where the job trailer's at. And as we pull in, uh, it, it, there's a sign that says, you know, this way for construction and this way for the graduation. So we're driving and we're kind of like, well, you generally just go toward the people, right? Where there's movement. So we drive that direction and, you know, they still, it was one sign. And as you go through this whole parking lot and all this stuff, then you're like, well, yeah, I, I've driven another few hundred feet. Like, I don't know where to go anymore. There's no more signs. So then it's just, you know, find your own way. So as we start driving up, we're like, ah, oh, yeah, that looks like the graduation. Uh, let's turn around, go that direction. Oh, cool. We found where we're working and found our guys that were on the site, you know, hang out there for a couple hours, do some, do some construction stuff, swinging a hammer. Uh, and then, uh, we're like, all right, well, we're good to go. Let's head out of here. So we start heading out. <laughs> as we start leaving, they were kind of doing like a graduation party parade, if you will. So as we're leaving, there's all these fucking people. <laughs> and, and at first they're like walking at us and like waving at us. And I'm like, oh shit, what do we do? Like, what, what, like, are they trying to flag us down? And, and the other, I was in the passenger seat, the other guy's driving. And I was kind of like, well, oh shit, should we slow down? But then we realized they're like looking at us because we're not actually working construction. So we don't have like construction clothes on. And they're just like congratulating us on graduating, essentially. <laughs> so we started waving back. We're like, yeah, woo. And every, like just all these people, they're like, yeah, waving at us and stuff. And I just thought it was really funny. We just had a good time uh, messing with people that had no idea that we were not there to graduate. These, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 35. Like, do I look like, maybe I look like an 18 year old. I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing. But uh, apparently I just graduated high school. Well, I'm glad you got to experience the coronavirus graduation, buddy. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. Hey, Ray, let's do some voicemails. This is the voicemail bumper. Yes. This is the bumper on your left, and this is the bumper on your right. Ray gets paid $5 a bumper. And finally, here's your voicemails. So much money. 
I get Sorry, commensurate the guitar riffs too cool compensation. Play twice. It's residual income. Oh, you know what? I, I did that, and I didn't even open up the um the the voices yet. Hey, ask producer Chris. Say yeah. something. Uh, buy buy me some time. Um, you know. Yeah, you know it's going. What was the and we're what doing was the things. printer problem you experienced earlier the today? Printer? Um, yeah. you know there was a paper what was jam. The, what was the problem? Okay. It was a paper jam. Uh, and there was a big piece of paper stuck in there in my uh, like an eight and a half uh, by eleven or like an eleven by seventeen. Eight, eight, uh, regular eight by eleven. Um, and uh, Rem's uh, r- wife uh didn't see it at first, and I pointed it out, and she's like, "Oh!" And then we took it out. And then it started working like magic. So, all right. Wow. You know. Yeah. Let's let's yeah. let's do some voicemails, Ray. That was exciting. Okay. What the thing do, Rim? I'm feeling I'm feeling uh not uppity, but I'm feeling like I'm feeling uh I took like you know some time to get some some solid ass sleep, bro. I mean, get off. You just got to get off and take out like for three hours, like real talk, bro. If you just sit there and like meditate, and you like kind of let your thoughts become, you know, hey, if uh. I don't know, but Larry, if you listen to uh, TRDS after being on it, because, you know, it's a solid show. Uh, you know, people really need to get on that meditation where you just kind of chill and you let your thoughts act as vehicles instead of just passing by. You know, just, you just chill. Just nothing can worry you because it's just, you, you are totally just in a relax, like in a state of so much relaxation. So, I mean, I did that, bro, and I got some solid sleep, bro. You know, I got like, I got some like, uh, musical, you know, I guess music related, uh, instruments kind of coming in to kind of put some, you know, put a spin on things. I mean, kind of, I talked to Hazen Cruz about it. I mean, I said, I used to like do things in music and he was like, yeah, I mean, you know, it's some dope shit, bro. But I mean, like, why'd you get out of it? I mean, I would never, I would never have thought that like Behringer, like that's a mixer company, I, you know, and then like I get back into it, bro. You can buy like, at the price point, you know, some of these machines that you couldn't get anymore unless it's like $3,000 because they don't make them anymore. You know I mean, that shit was made in like the 80s and it was like, like a lot of the old electronic stuff that people, you know, like the ADAR, like, I mean, Rem, I know you listen to like, you know, some old school Kanye and shit and like 808s and Heartbreaks, bro, the TR-808. <laughs> you want to get one of them nowadays, bro? That's just like $3,000. But you can get, uh, Barons are made, in my opinion, it's it's such an accurate uh, remaking of it. It's not like a emulator. It's not digital. Fuck that shit. It's full analog. You know, you you open up that shit, you gonna find a PCB in there, and a bunch of yummy, some old you know some old school shit, but it's new. So and it's like you know it, you can get it at a price point of three hundred dollars. Like damn. And it's by a company that used to make mixes and shit. I mean now they don't. They make a bunch of other shit because they gave the people what they want. But I mean you know this ain't really episode related shit, but. I mean, you got apparently a good ass thumbnail coming up. So I mean, this shit gonna be like dope, bro. You know what I mean? It's gonna be like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Two Goliaths in the rim. I take uh, in in the rim. Fuck that. Two Goliaths in the rim. Just call the ring the rim. You know what I mean? And then let Ray and whoever duke it out. Even though Ray is gonna be ten million and ten million and zero. You know what I mean? She got. I, I know Ray. I, I know about that. Like you know what I mean? You kind of like put yourself out there, like you know, this person and stuff. And it's like you know, like. In reality, like a seven foot tall, like, you know, gargantuan human being and stuff, you like the unstoppable force, and there is no immovable object, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, that's. All right. And the, the Google lady got him. Uh, uh, that was, that was very in depth. That's Isaac. Yeah. That's, thank that's you. Good. Thank that's you, Isaac. Fantastic. Let me, I got to get to a couple thank things you, here. Uh, the first thing is, you know, Ray, I need, I need a couple weeks learning music theory. Hey, Matt yeah, from NFHC, yep. if you're listening, can you teach me music theory? Uh, because I think I just need music theory. And I mean, the computer shit, dude, all for you now. Like, I got iTunes, uh, excuse yeah. me, I got GarageBand on my phone now. Um, and I, I wrote, you know, Ray, I, I sent you some songs. I think I had yeah, one. Yeah, and they yeah. Do, do I have the, um, I don't think I have my, 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 uh, all right, I never put it in here. If I did, I forgot. Anyways, I would love to just like start making music because I think that's awesome. But I, the, the, the thing that just gets me is like, it's like colors. Colors don't make sense to me because I'm red, green, colorblind, right? So when I do art, it kind of looks weird, right? I can't, <laughs> I can't match my own clothes, all right? So 
<laughs> but same with music. I, I know what I want to do, but I just don't know how to get there. All right. The other thing is, Isaac said, is that um, uh, you got a good night's sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot stress to you enough how important it is to get a good night's sleep at least three times a week. Right? I'm guilty of this myself. Right? I stay up too late and I wake up too early. Okay. I wake up at 540 every day to go to work. All right. And I'm not going to bed. Even as much as I t- say, Ray, I'm going to bed. And it's 10 p.m. I, it's still 1130, 12 before I ever go to bed. And then I wake up yeah. seven times in the middle of the night because, you know, why, why, why would I just get a solid night's sleep? But man, you get that good night's sleep. It changes your worldview on everything. And you know what helps, Ray? You know what helps with that when you're feeling down and you can't sleep? Ask producer Chris. Mm hmm. Exercise, right? I used to say this on Triple T. You feeling down? Go for a walk, right? You feeling down? Mm-hmm. You feeling a little sad? Go for a walk. Ask Randy. Ask Randy how that went for him, right? Okay. Anyways, yeah. thank you, Isaac. That's uh, some dope ass shit that you're talking right there, man. Appreciate it. All right, we got another voicemail. Are you ready, Ray? Oh, I was born ready. You better be, baby. You better be. Here we go. We've been waiting for this one all week. Hey, Rem. My name is Casey. I'm from Florida. Uh, this is my first time calling in. I've been following hey. you on Twitter for quite some time. Uh, even had some questions asked on an old show you used to host uh, along with Jules Scott. I had to say Good old huh? foreign think tank. <laughs> uh, and I've followed Ooh. you ever since. It's been many, many years, but um, been following you That's the whole cool. time. So. Uh, nice. This is my first time calling He's in. Right behind, yeah. I've dropped you a few lines on Twitter, <laughs> um, but you know, here I am, uh, about to be forty years old, and uh, I'm a member of the uh, good old Wow community for the past fifteen years. But um, still, huh? Yeah. Kind of wow. taking a step back on that community uh, because uh, I'm married, got two kids, got a full time job. Yep. Um, you know, and I, I see your podcast here and you talk about a lot of issues that we deal with as we get older and what is pausing. I'm pausing. Hold on. Ray. Yeah. Ray, are we, are we getting into triple T territory? Are we getting into my wheelhouse? What do you think? What do you think this is? I was about to say if he's, if he's, um, you know, dropped a few lines, had some questions in the past, we are doing that triple T bonus episode. So yeah, we got to talk more about that at the end of the show, but I mean, I'm yes, feeling it, yeah. baby. I'm feeling it. Okay. Let's, let's see where we're mm-hmm. going. Like and what comes up and man, I got my fair share of them. So, um, right now I yeah. work, uh, law enforcement for the past, uh, 13 years. And I particularly work in, uh, crimes against children, particularly internet crimes. Uh-oh, and, uh, some shit. You know, I see some of the worst stuff that law enforcement (laughs) has to deal with, and that's been my job for the past 10 years. Oh, God, uh, I'm so sorry. With the current climate of what's going on in America. But good on you. You know, a lot of this stuff um, really hits hard and and affects me and and my ability to do my job. Um, I got to change my clothes just to go to the grocery store. Uh, I can't wear anything from my job um, because I I don't want something to happen just while I'm trying to buy eggs or milk for my family. But, um, you know, there's – I think uh, everybody across America right now can still pretty much agree that they don't like the people that I go after, and law enforcement is a very necessary thing. But um, I feel very vilified right now, and you know I'm doing what I can to protect my family. And um, get your notes ready. You know, just uh, deal with all these issues that we have coming up. And you know, there's a lot of us out there who are just trying to do a good job. Um, and you know, I, I'm just curious what you thought of that. And uh, huh. you know, here I am, an old uh, World of Warcraft player. Oh, we got cut off. Okay. Hey, it looks like uh, Casey's in the <laughs> chat room. So awesome. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for, for calling in. 
Um, if any of you used to listen to me on the old show, please call in because I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what's up. If I gave you advice or whatever, let me know. Uh, let me know if I ruined your life. or <laughs> 860-316-4776. But, um, Man, it's good to hear from you, Casey. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you for listening to the old show and getting aboard the new one here. You know, you're one of few because not many – well, none of anybody from the old show came over. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. So, joking, uh, joking aside. It makes two aside, of us. It, makes two of yeah, us, Casey. Two, two of you. And Randy's three, right? Okay. So, there you go, I was yeah. fencing before. Don't make me count the numbers because mm-hmm. then it, ma- it kills the joke. Uh, <laughs> that literally gets to all seven and three quarters of our listeners. <laughs> yeah. So, so last week we were talking with, with Larry – and Larry, Larry is a little bit of a polarizing figure, and that's fine. I love that. You know, all views are welcome here. Uh, someone asked yeah. me if they if they could come in, if they could leave a voicemail and say how much they love wearing masks, and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I don't care. I I don't discriminate. I don't prejudice. I don't bias against anything. You want you have something to say, you say it, and that's fine because I love hearing different viewpoints and I love having conversations with people. Uh, Casey brings up a very interesting point. We kind of touched on this with Larry last week. Um, Yes, to what I was saying, we as a nation, as a society, as an American society, we overcorrect to disgusting degrees. All right. So right now, a few, few bad cops. All right. Maybe some systems aren't great. Maybe we need to look at things, how we do things. Right. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely. But we are overcorrecting to the point where the Atlanta police department just, just didn't show up to work. They just, didn't show up to work because the 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 officers involved in that shooting outside of that Wendy's, uh, where or, or, what are they being charged with murder? Yeah, it, yeah, We're charged with murder. Yeah. So so for for you know all the circumstances, I'm not. I don't really want to get into the circumstances surrounding and how they ended up there and how they ended up shooting this guy and what happened before that. I think we all know what happened, but we're in such a point of overcorrecting that these guys who just trying to save their own lives and do their job are now being fired and which in turn makes it impossible for the other members of that police department to do their job. Right. Cause now they have to worry about being fired by protecting themselves. So they all walked out. All right. So we have a, a section of, Oh, like, don't worry. You have your, your opportunity well, here. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm, I'm chill. Yeah. All right. We, we have, we have a section <laughs> of our society, uh, a very, a very, uh, it's a minority of the society, but they're very vocal. All right, you've heard about the silent majority and the, the vocal minority, all this bullshit. They're just very vocal right now, amplified by social media and amplif- amplified by clickbait to make you think, God, all policemen and all law enforcement are evil. Well, that's not the case. I mean, sure, I could get a better response time in the suburbs, right? And maybe law enforcement doesn't stop crime, but you know they're there to kind of protect you when you need it in the cities. And there's a lot of there's a lot of things there. So it's like a lot of nuance in that argument, but you can't vilify every single one of them because one of them, a few of them are, are maybe not great, or a few of them made a mistake, right? Right? It's like saying all podcasters are bad because one of them likes anime. I don't know. Yeah, we've been told for so long you can't judge a whole group of people based off of one, right? And you can't stereotype. Yeah. And you can't make uh, make sweeping uh, uh, accusations or sweeping judgments over our groups. Um, yeah, that's what we're exactly doing right now. So the people who go out there and fight the good fight and try to be honest and hardworking and, and uphold the oath they took, uh, and they're they're all being vilified for for no mm-hmm. reason whatsoever, other than politics, right? Other than it's an election year and let's destabilize everything. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't want to get in there. Uh, Ray, do you have yeah. thoughts on this? And we'll get to we'll get to yeah. ask producer Chris too. It's the same thing as, uh, and I'm going to take this opportunity to tear down teachers, uh, as I love to do, which is the same thing. It's like, I like to bag on teachers and be like, you're a bunch of whiny motherfuckers. You get the summer off. Uh, I was the one volunteering dozens, if not, you know, more hours of my free time raising money for your, you know, pitiful school, uh, so that you don't have to spend your time doing it. And then when you come to the PTA or PTO meeting and, we had a dinner that cost a couple hundred bucks for the people that had volunteered a bunch of time. And you're coming to us being like, why would you spend that much money? But we raised like 35 grand for your school. Like you can shut the fuck up. Like I hate you. <laughs> and then all I want to do is tell every teacher you're a fucking piece of shit. You're complaining like, Oh no, over the summer, I don't have time to do any fundraising. Cause I got to go to my friend's wedding in Italy. And Oh my God, my other friends have a wedding in Costa Rica. And, oh, I still have to go on vacation. Like, shut the fuck up, right? Same thing. I'll make fun of teachers all day long. The reality is there's a lot of really good teachers out there. And 
that's kind of what's happening. It feels like today, everyone's like doing what I do about teachers, but they're being serious. And they're like, all cops are bad. All cops are racist. I'm like, "Uh, no, that's not the case. If every cop was racist, (laughs) there would be so many more dead people. The numbers would be astronomical compared to what we see today. That's a fact. If all cops are right? racist, you, you'd yeah. be able to say all cops are racist and not laugh about it. Yes. Right? <laughs> because it's yes. A yes. Problem. Exactly. So all, all I'm saying is this. Everyone's lumping everyone into groups. And it's, it's not the case. There are plenty of, uh, as much as I love to say teachers are, are whiny little pieces of shit. There are so many good teachers out there. And same thing with like law enforcement. There are people out there doing legitimate good. And for us to vilify all the police, because I don't know what the actual numbers are. I don't even care about looking them up um, that much other than the fact that all I see is about like eight names of black people that they that they keep using yeah. eight names. I, I there I know there's more. I'm not trying to, to minimize it. That, but all I'm saying is if it was that big of a problem, how how is the whole country of law enforcement racist? If you can only come up with those many, it doesn't make sense. So. There are, there have to be, there are very good people out there. And you know what, Casey, keep at it. Keep doing what you do. People come around. We'll overcorrect, uh, hopefully in the opposite. Um, you know, and, uh, ho- hopefully we'll come back around full circle where, uh, right. you know, we, we come back to appreciate them. All right. So as producer Chris came on this yes. show for this very topic and this wasn't mm-hmm. planned. I mean, this wasn't, this was, this wasn't planned s- part of the topic. K- Casey's voicemail came in right before we went on the air. So thank you, Casey. Um, and listen, it, you're, you're always welcome to hang out in our chat. Bit.do slash TRDS one. Absolutely. Right? We're, we're, you know what? Uh, as I was telling someone earlier this week, I do this podcast for a couple of, don't worry, Asprey, we'll get to you. Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> but I do this podcast for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a creative outlet for me, right? I love just coming down here and hanging with my buddy Ray and ask producer Chris and anybody in the chat room, you know, the three of you and the seven and a half and three quarters listeners. And it's just, it's fun. It's a cr- good creative outlet for me. And two, if I can encourage, you know, some people, men, women, otherwise, uh, and, and let them know that they're not alone and that they can do it. And you know what? Maybe we're all in this together, bro. We're all in this together, right? All right. Yeah. Yep. Now, ask producer Chris. Yeah. Ask producer Chris uh, is is an assistant producer for the Rich Dickman Show, uh, but he is independently independently contracted. He's not an employee. All right. So all mm-hmm. his 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 views, his opinions, and his thoughts are do not reflect uh, Rich Dickman Group, Rich Dickman Associates, or Rich Dickman himself. Um, Confirm. If I had Jonathan Silver available to read the whole disclaimer, he would. Uh, but. <laughs> Now, ask producer Chris, if you're getting too far, are you talking too much? I am going to cut you off, and I would hope you respect me as a show's host. <laughs> that is totally fine. <laughs> okay. All right. So, here's your mic. I don't know don't where. Don't talk because you're going to wake okay. up everybody. So, where should I start? <laughs> Wherever you. Maybe. What? what? I don't know. Maybe, uh, why are we vilifying? Let me just say this to oh, assistant right. producer Chris. You don't yeah. have to speak loudly. I can hear you perfectly fine. It'll come okay. through. You, you know, you, right. you'll be good. Yeah. So, I don't want to go. Obviously, you don't want to go too political. So, I think the general issue right now is uh, the media. Um, the media has just censored, at this point, censored everything. Um, and you can't say anything on social media without being judged. Um, if you're a Republican, you're automatically assumed to be racist. And if you don't, you know, if you don't uh, approve of what these... Uh, people saying to fund police. If you if you don't approve that, then you're you're a terrible human being. Um, and I always I always see people. Oh, we have to unite. You know, um, how are you how how are we going to unite as a country if you don't even accept the other side? Half of them. Ha- you, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. Half of them. More, maybe more than half. We don't know. Um, and I just think, um, you know, now. In Atlanta, um, I want to bring this up. I think this is, you know, we could talk about George Floyd. I think everyone agrees. How dare you? He's a saint. Stop it. We can all agree what happened with George Floyd was terrible. Bless his name. You know, um, what, like, the uh, I think it was uh, his Chauvin. That was the cop's name? Derek Chauvin. Yeah. Um, yep. If you look at his record, he had multiple times where he was written up for certain actions that he's done. So, yes, I agree that there is some type of police brutality. 
Um, and I think, I mean, Trump has come out with an executive order to create a law to create a database for police, which I think is a great idea because I think we should, I mean, I think police should be accountable for their actions. And I think it gets to a point where mm-hmm. if they get written up three or four times, I think, yes, they shouldn't be a cop anymore. Chauvin at that time shouldn't have been a cop at that point. Like mm-hmm. he had so many things written up on him that he shouldn't have been a cop. He should have lost his job years ago. So I think people are taking these, like you said, Ray, there's nine people, three or three people this year. All of a sudden it's, it's all about, it's, it's all about black. You know, I don't want to get too far into this, but you know, black lives matter. Um, and all that, I just feel we're missing the point because at one point at the beginning of all this, we were all united. At one point, we actually all believed what happened to George Floyd was terrible. Like, no, no one. I've never heard anyone. No one disagreed. It, what? No one disagreed with him being. No, in, but yeah, no, yeah, 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 no. Yeah. But like then, all all these people, like you have, um, they co-opted the movement. They, they co co opt. They had, you know, you have people rioting. You have people looting. How is that justified? How is that going to help this cause? Um. If you want to go again, go after the police, then protest with the police. Don't go after com- companies that had nothing to do with it. You know, um, it, it's just it, at this point, it's ridiculous how people are just just making this just this huge um, racial issue where at, at one point we were all united as a country. Um, and then, you know, we have uh, Richard Brooks, who was. I don't want to. Should I go? Do you want me to get into this? This is this is your floor, pal. So I know I'm probably like all over the place. I'll tell you I'm to not stop. used what do you to this. Mean to stop? Well, yeah. If you have any question, you can. So you, you have Rayshard Brooks, who I think this was the point where I kind of like lost it because I can understand why Chauvin was called a murderer because he did kill that per- He did kill George Floyd. But would you have Rayshard <laughs> Brooks? who was parked in a Wendy's um, drive up. He was drunk. The cops had a 20, 30 minute conversation with him. He knew he was going to get arrested at that point. It, it, you know, you're drunk. Like it, it's, there's no, like everyone knew he was, he was doing something. It, it's a crime to drive drunk. I think everyone can agree with that. You, as Richard Brooks, once you're about to be arrested, you re- resist arrest. Then you punch a cop in the face, you take his taser, you run away, and then at the last second, you point the taser and shoot the taser at the cop. What is the cop supposed to do at that point? But there's nothing, there's nothing that the cop could have done. You, at, at that point, you lost your rights because now you are a danger to society. You are drunk, running away with a taser, which is a deadly weapon. You can die from a taser. If you, if you don't know what you're doing and if you, sh- like, if you look at the video, the, Rayshard pointed that taser at the cop's face. If that hit the, t- hit the cop, he, he could have died. Also, let's say it hit the, hit the cop. If he was tased, what would have Rayshard done at that point? He could have went to the body. He could have grabbed the gun. You got to look at all the options at this point. But to say to people, for the people that are on social media saying he didn't, he didn't deserve to die. Or I, I, I'm not saying he didn't, he did deserve to die. But if there, there was no other option for the cop at that point, like, yes, it's, it's sad that he died, but he put himself in that position, you know? And then you have the media and I, I know I'm, I'm going all over the place, but then you have the media who's saying, Oh, this guy's such a peaceful person. You know, he loved his family, all this. If you look at his record, he was in and out of jail for uh, child abuse. He abused his wife. So don't, don't tell me that he loved his family because he didn't. He didn't. Um, it, it's just, and then you have now, now cops are walking out at, in Atlanta. And I feel, you know what? They have the right to leave, to just walk away. Because you know what? If, if, for the and I'm sorry for Atlanta pe- people who live in Atlanta that are dealing with this that don't want to deal with this, 
but you have mobs of people who wanted to fund the police. You have cops who can't do their job and are accused of being a murderer. You know, what? if I was a cop, I'd buy walk out too. You know, what? if you don't, if you don't want cops, that's fine. I'll stay home. And you know what? When when your company burns down, when you get robbed or something else, it worse than being robbed. Don't complain to us. Don't call us. You didn't you didn't want cops in the first place. So I think people need to. I, and I think it all boils down to we've been in a pandemic for three months. I think people are mad about a lot of things. And I think people need to calm down and realize what's right and what's wrong. And it's just you got to you, you got to understand that not all cop, cops are bad. And you got to look at what actually happened and not just take it as a oh, well, it's a it's a white cop. That killed a, a black person. It's it's, it's a race. It's racist. It's so not. Yeah. What are you trying to say? And no pun intended, Ray. Okay, I'm not. I'm not the lowest form of comedy with puns. Uh, but it's not a black and white issue. Yeah, it's it's more nuanced than that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of nuance in, in this uh, whole thing. Yeah, are you nervous? Kind of. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Chris, I got I got one for you. <clears throat> yeah. If uh, Chauvin should have been fired a long time ago, mm-hmm. uh, or not been allowed to be a cop. Uh, then maybe it is systemic. Maybe maybe they were allowing it. Oh shit! Okay, <laughs> does that make sense? It, <laughs> like what wait, I'm, you how, repeat, how I'm saying you, that? Wait, can like you if, say that again? If he had se- yeah, if he had 17 instances, uh, and yep. you're saying, uh, of course, you're you're putting out uh, a number that you think is uh, reasonable, but say I think I believe you said four. Uh, inst- I think uh, uh, Piers, Piers, if you look at sorry, Seth. If you look at 17 instances, doesn't mean all – because anyone can put an instance instance out. You know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. It, so it doesn't – like I think there was – I think from my understanding, there, there was like four or five instances that were bad. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like So like that, that's what I was trying – Yeah. you know. So – Well, yeah. yeah. Sorry. So my thing to you then is if, if that's the case and it's so yeah. obvious, then yeah. – do you think that possibly there is systemic racism in that area because they kind of said, this seems pretty obvious, but we're going to overlook it because, because we're, we're okay with this. So, so how I look at systemic racism is completely different. I don't, so like, like I said, I think there is a police issue. I don't think they get trained enough. Um, I don't think there's systemic racism because I, when oh, I God. think of All systemic. Right. All right. I'm going to, I want to stop that one right there. Because you're going to get yourself in trouble. Ray's frozen. <laughs> and I know I know we have thoughts on systemic racism, but this is not the place for him. Yeah. <laughs> I just overall think there is there is police brutality. Yeah. We do need to do things. Um, and I think Trump yeah, has made little robot-y. great points on, you know, with the exec- – Your mom's robot okay? So fuck off with your bullshit. I don't want to hear that anymore. I'm going to I'm gonna finish the show by myself if you keep it up. All right. So that's enough of that. Okay. That's enough of that. That's enough of internet issues. Let's let's get on with the show. We've got things to finish up with and, and wrapping up. All right. All right. Ask producer Chris. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You feel good? Um, great points. Yeah. Great points. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. Great points. Well spoken. Um, but I think you changed you know, a lot of minds. Need, yeah. You need to know. I don't think you, I changed a lot of minds, but. No. But you need to get your social media out there so people can tell you how wrong you are. All right. Yeah. So, Ray had an experience this week. Let's get to that real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to introduce this week's finalists for Dick of the Week. And here is our first nominee. And only nominee. Uh, but go ahead, Ray. What, what happened right. to you, bud? So, I uh, had to drive home from work uh, momentarily the other day. Um, mow and as I did so, yeah, to mow my fucking lawn. How do I send this fucking picture anyway? Um, and basically what happened was, uh, I, I'm, I'm heading back home, just driving down the street. And, uh, right before it splits into two lanes, I see this little, little white truck in front of me. And on the tailgate, I see a bunch of like handwritten stuff. And I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. So I, I get like, you know, I'm like, I love it. now I want to get a little bit closer. And as I uh, pull up, I see something about like tailgating is bad and, and something along those lines. And I'm kind of like, oh, well, this is weird. So I'm trying to read this. And 
apparently this person just wrote like tailgating is bad. It's unsafe. A bunch of other shit that I couldn't even read because the handwriting so bad. I'm like, ah, whatever. So I, I uh, pull up. Uh, it splits into two lanes. I'm behind this person for like 200 feet. And uh, as I pull up beside them, it's, uh, you know, 75 degrees outside. I got my windows down. And I look over and this fucking lady is yelling at me, yelling at me. She's like, quit tailgating. It's dangerous. And I was like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> lady. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. So uh, so she's yelling at me that uh, I, I shouldn't be tailgating. And then I'm like, uh, well, this is interesting because she's doing about 25 in a 40 zone. Uh, so she's kind of inviting it and she's gotten handwritten shit all over the back of her truck. So, you know, she's, she's kind of inviting it. Right. So then, then I'm like, Hey, uh, lady, we're sitting at this light and I'm like, dude, there's a 40 mile an hour speed limit sign right there. Uh, you could at least go a little bit faster. And she's, she's yelling at me that the, the speed limit doesn't matter if she slams on her brakes and I hit her, it's my fault. And I'm like, no, you're, you're crazy. It doesn't really work that way. And how about you uh, drive a little bit faster? And I was like, do you realize you're just an angry person? You're literally just an angry person. I wasn't actually tailgating you. And you're just yelling at people. Like, she literally must drive around every day just yelling at everyone for tailgating her. So uh, that's definitely a dick of the week. And um, she's probably the epitome of what's wrong with society these days. Um, people that are just playing victim. That's, Ray, uh, that's I know, how I see I know it. You, I know you're trying to be Svensson, but Svensson's better at this than you are. Oh, he is. Yeah. I should have, like, <laughs> described it to him and let him do it because yeah. that would have been – You could have done that. You could have said, hey, Svensson, here, let me email you what happened and let him call it in. Or you could have just called in a voicemail uh, as Svensson. Ooh, that would have been good. There's oh, the – uh, if you want to see That lady it, was driving There's that the truck. truck. Yeah, so oh. there's the truck right there. Obviously, run down piece of shit Ford Ranger. It's white. Yeah. Got a bunch of handwritten shit all over the back. Yeah, uh, right. Tailgating is dangerous. That's written Ray. really clearly. The rest of it says Ray. back off. I don't even know. Yeah. Ray. Yeah. Christ, are you ignoring me or did you lose me again? What? Oh, I don't know. What I said what? <laughs> I said what a bunch oh, of times. I didn't hear what? <laughs> <laughs> Ray, uh, uh, blur out, the, said, or blur yeah. out the license plate. Blur out the license plate and upload it on the website so I can post it for the episode. Okay. Hell yeah. We can do that. That's easy enough. After much deliberation, the incredibly handsome expert judges have come to the consensus that this week's Dick of the Week award goes to... Ray's driver. All right, Ray. Good job, man. <laughs> Stupid fucking lady. Right. Stupid tailgate yeah. lady bitch. All right. So, all right. I'm sorry, Ray. That lady sucks. Uh, if, if, ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you can't oh, tell, yeah. we've had some issues tonight and uh, it's throwing us all off our game. So we're gonna we're trying we're trying to muscle through this one. Um, I'm sorry that happened to you, Ray. Are you okay? Um, yeah, uh, I don't think that lady's okay. She needs some help. That's maybe that's she, a fact. Maybe she's already dead. Oh, that's not wrong. Shit. <laughs> Whoops. You- I mean, so many issues. <laughs> They're not labeled right. That's that's a problem. Hey, folks, it's time for that wacky segment where we review porn because we have a psychopath listener, better known as the laughing stock of the adult film industry, who insists on sending us his ridiculous piles of trash. So without further ado, Mr. Porno Man's latest perversion. All right. We thought we got rid of him after episode 100 and then he slowly made his way back and we don't say no to any content. So he once again returns, and this is going to be a little awkward for me, Ray, because I'm sitting next. I just told you earlier in the show how long I've known this young man. Oh, this is going to be good. Actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually awkward. slightly uh, awkward. Yeah, so go ahead and read the go ahead and re- read the letter here, Ray. Yeah, this is as awkward as when I read my kids these uh, post show uh, greetings, gentlemen. <laughs> as Father's Day approaches this upcoming weekend, I feel obligated to deliver a video. That every father has had, wait, what? A video, uh, <laughs> something about, uh, this thing doesn't make sense. It probably means to say, I feel obligated to deliver a video uh, that covers a thought that every father has at one point. Let me set the scene. Your wife slash girlfriend slash lady slash thing is pregnant and you're at the <laughs> OBGYN for an ultrasound. 
As the nurse administers the ultrasound, you think to yourself, what would it look like if they ultrasounded my dick inside her? I don't even know what to do with this. In this week's (laughs) sensational cinematic adventure, we explore that all too common thought. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you MRI porn. Regards, Mr. Porno Man. Um, all right. So while I open this, at I least at least Mr. Porno Man's contributing, unlike Randy, who hasn't yes. been here in two weeks. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Oh, I'm going to hit play. Can you hear this, Ray? There we go. Yep. Can you hear it? This becomes all the more obvious. Oh, God. Yeah, the washing machine. <laughs> Using an MRI scanner, scientists can now see and fully understand the mechanics of intercourse. There's not a lot right, of room I'm to broadcasting inside this an MRI oh, yeah. or inside We're the scanner. We're going to get banned. And okay, the so people going into a, for 15 minutes at a time. An MRI so it's not an ideal sex. love nest, but the images produced oh my God. show the anatomy of love. Can you see this, Ray? Yeah, yeah, I gotta figure out how to this mute it, though. This extraordinary 3D image was created from the MRI scans. Oh, my God. They the made man it... is colored orange, and the woman is blue. <laughs> um, wow. The results show that how she blue? causes that guy's a blue. shift in the position of the uterus and occurs at a much sharper angle than scientists had originally believed. <laughs> Ray, I don't know what to say. M- wow. Oh, now there's thrusting. <laughs> Lots of thrusting. Oh, my... Are you are you comfortable so, with this, Christopher? No, I'm I'm totally. That's fine. I just it um, looks like a baby kicking, but not a baby. Yeah, that's what. It looks like if you're like pushing your hand through clay. Yeah, like if if you had a, like a big loose thing of clay <laughs> and you're just beating it up with your fist. That's what yeah. this looks like. Oh my god! It is yeah. An MRI it's like sl- of- slow motion Jean Claude Van Damme punching the bad guy in the face. Yeah, this is disturbing. I, it's just like last week we had ankle sprain porn. Now we have MRI, and I am just I'm <laughs> flabbergasted at what I'm seeing right is now. Is this like a fetish? I, this is everything's a fetish. Well, yeah, ass producer Chris. But okay, uh, it's but, half educational, half fetish. Yeah, so you can kind of see like the head of the penis yeah. mashing against something, and it's is, just is that is what smashing is that? That's a vagina. Okay. The penis is inside of the vagina. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know, dude. I don't What's know. Can you, can you you teach me the, the? You see this up here? You, this yeah. is the, this is the bladder. Oh. All right. That's okay. where the pee pee is. Okay? Yeah. The urine. Excuse oh, me. Fuck. This is the penis. Thank thank you for. And it's inside of the vagina right now. What are what the what the kids thinking? Did you mute this, Ray? No. I don't think there's sound. There's probably no. Did sound you? To it. No. Maybe the sound. Everything's going wrong tonight. Um. Yeah, Kiriyat in the chat I mean, says, "Dude, it's it more of a visual thing. Seconds. It's not realistic." Um. Yeah. No. This is this is mm-hmm. probably more disturbing than ankle porn. Uh, excuse me, sprained ankle porn. Just because it could. <laughs> yeah. That like, was. It's like if you're watching like paranormal, uh, paranormal mysteries. You know that show where they go, go the ghost hunters, and and they show you that infrared camera, and this and this is what you get. It's like ghosts. Oh, oh my god. Is she what moaning? Is can you? Is okay. she moaning? Like you can see no, the spine like the here. MRI. MRI. Like Look at this, backwards. Ray. Yeah. You can see the spine. You can see well, like wait, the intestines. So is the guy on the, the right the right now? Yeah, the guy's on the is right. Is that his shoving balls? His penis on the bottom. Is oh, they're balls? kissing now. Oh, that's gross. That's even, <laughs> it's an oh, MRI. They're kissing. Oh my kissing. god, the tongue. Oh, you see the tongue. Oh my god. This is okay. Okay, that's enough. I'm not going to auto. Jeez, I'm sorry. I'm not I'm so sure sorry. what to do with this. Yeah, let's let's stop that. Okay, so um, all right. My internet switch is so fucked. <laughs> it's been a rough one. Yeah, Mr. Porno Man, I uh, I do appreciate your um originality in this. Mm. Like, I've I've never seen such a thing. I've never. Have you seen MRI? No, no. I've never yeah. come across it. And, and you're you're 25, so you've seen tons of porn already. Yes. Yeah. I have, um, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I okay, like I want to be mad. It, it was at Mr. a full Porno time Man, job right? for like, four years. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that I can be Mr. Mad at Mr. Porno Man over this. I mean, this is this is porn that you can show everybody because you don't see anything, right? Because it's all it's all like the insides. Um, but at the it, same time, it, because it's, it's, it's wildly disturbing. It, that's what I was gonna say. It could be educational yeah, in a way. Um, yeah, you could actually make that into it, an educational like, video. 
Yeah. It's like when, uh, say National Geographic goes down to like, uh, in the deep jungles of South America and there's a bunch mm-hmm. of ladies that, I mean, all they, they don't really don't wear any clothes and they're just they naked. Titties. And there might be some titties super tight, yeah, super tight, just titties out everywhere. Even some vaginas maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, just but titties, titties, but titties. They don't have to blur it out. Titties and ass. And why? This is how they live. That's how they live. And this is very educational and therefore non-graphic. Hey, Ray. Um, in, isn't in that, that sense, like the ultimate therefore, sexism yeah. though? It's like, you know, titties out everywhere, but they cover up the penis. Kind of is. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, like if I, I don't was the chief guys of a tribe. Penises cause they're kind of well, no, hold on. You got to hear me out. You got to hear me out because if I was, <laughs> if okay, I was the chief okay. of a tribe, yeah. as I would be because I have a massive penis, I would show that shit off to everybody. I'd be like, look at my massive penis. Look how big this thing is. That's mm-hmm. why I am the chief and you are not. Is that would be like this, like laying it out on a table? Come, boom, chief. You know, don't be gross, yeah, like Ray. Trump. God dang Thump. it! Don't be gross. You're God. disgusting. No, I'd swing my massive penis around and show everybody. Listen, uh, I'm the boss. Of course, yeah, exactly. Apparently, exactly. you're the one who won so, the penis contest. So fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> so to become the chief, you it's a, a battle of penises. So it's like a sword yeah. fight. And whoever went so the most skilled and large larger is is better for the reach. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, get, get with get, me in boxing. Reach matters. Get with me on the penis yeah. humor. All right, all right. Uh, yeah. Ask producer Poke Chris. You got social media you want to promote? Uh not really. No, no. Okay. I think I'm gonna you know. All right. So here's here's what we'll do. If you didn't like what Ask producer Chris <laughs> yeah, had I said to a lot say, of controversial stuff. I don't want to plug it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm though. good. Yeah. I just wanted to come on, you know, feel it out. You, you know, can, you can find me at, Rem, at Rem Dickman on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can call 860-316-4776 and you can tell Ask Producer Chris yeah. um, if he needs to go fuck himself or if he's right. You know, one or the other. I'm, um, I'm always down for a debate. Yeah. So if someone wants to actually have a, a – I'll say this. If someone actually wants to have a polite conversation and actually like – you know, oh, good luck. Nobody wants that. But I'm, I'm, I'm being like totally well, genuine. Yeah, because, I'm with you. Because I have I'm had. With you. Yep. I actually had. I, I actually. Burned up, burned up. Oh, yeah, I actually had. Um, I, I know we're going back to this topic. But I'm not going to say anything bad. I actually had a very good conversation <laughs> with someone who, um, yeah, kind of was on the other side a few weeks ago, and I actually had an hour conversation with them on the phone, and you know he put he talked about what he believes and I talked about what I believed. It was a really good conversation at the end of the day. So, I mean, if someone out there wants to talk to me and actually have a good conversation, I would be more than happy to talk and understand your views. And if you can respect my views as well, I'll respect your views. Um, I mean, I think at this, at this point in our country, we, I think we all have to, we need it. We need to unite. And it doesn't matter if you don't, it, yes. it doesn't matter if you disagree, we all have to come together. And that's the only way we're going to get through have, all this. We have to understand why we disagree. Yeah. Yes. We have to well, understand the, each other. The, what needs to happen is that people have to uh, practice what they preach, which is acceptance. You can't literally <laughs> yeah. sit there and say, and say this, you have to change and yeah. accept this change. That That's not the way it works. We have it has to be mutual, uh, yeah. and and as you said, it has to be open discussions. And, and I'm I I'm with you. It's nice to be able to chat with people, uh, get get all points of views, and uh, you know find common some common ground and uh, move forward. All right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so so I'm sure if you plug your your uh, social media, you'll get plenty of uh, people that will be very supportive of you. Eight eight six zero three one six four seven seven six. All right, Ray, say the line. Uh, wait, which one? At Jules Winfeld on Twitter. I didn't, I, I got can sidetracked. You, can you read that first line, please? Let's, oh, let's bring this baby home. Let's bring this baby home. That's right. Thank you guys so oh, much for listening to the Rich Dickman show. We love it. Uh, we love it when we have attention focused on us. I do anyways. I, I seek the attention and crave your approval. So thank you. Yeah, if you okay. like what we do, you want to support the show, you can tell a friend, leave a review. Hey, Casey, thank you for leaving a voicemail. And Isaac, thank you as well. And yeah. Casey, thank you for joining us in our chat tonight. Bit.do slash TRDS1 if you want to get in on the Discord. Uh, but leaving those reviews and telling a friend, that helps a ton. And if you like us even more than that, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash Rich Dickman. There's extra content every week. Uh, sorry about last week. Ray, Ray, Ray. Ray messed that one up. Ray, Ray, 
Ray, you asshole. Mm-hmm. Uh, but <laughs> you've got Nothing bonus clips, bonus shows, and we've even got um, the old two old liquor fueled episodes that uh, that uh, we we did some pop up audio on. And uh, as I said earlier in the show, as producer Chris and I, we recorded a Patreon bonus episode in the car going to and from picking up pizza. That's right. And uh, if you if you hit the the high level, we will send you a shirt. And Kristen, uh, this is this is a shout out to you. I know what design you want now. Thank you, Randy. We will be sending your shirt very soon. Okay, I know it's taking the one. It's it's, it's you know I'm one person. I'm one person. Okay. And Ray, uh, guess who oh, still hasn't received oh, their okay. shirt? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's okay you if anywhere? you take a long time, but if I take any oh, bit of time, it's, whoa. it's so bad. <laughs> I, I'm not the one who wrote a seven like a two and sent the freaking thing to the wrong goddamn state, and nobody can figure out where it goes. Did you? Did you get? Did hey, you get hold of that package I yet? I don't. I was I actually looking this. that up yeah, this. pre-show, and uh, but I know who you guys uh, so I did get an email from them. Let me let me follow up on that. But uh, let me just say this: uh, I'm not the person that works at the post office that smeared a seven into a two. What? Oh, no. Ray, Ray, I saw a picture of the package through people that I know who were able to help me out. Mm-hmm. All right. And, I have highly and, legible handwriting. Yeah. What, what did that letter it's say? It's almost too did, good. Did they tell you to go fuck yourself or did, did you do what I told you to do? Because I told you what to do earlier and you haven't done it yet. Uh, yeah. So I got a, I got an email on the uh, the tracking it down and trying yeah. to get it rerouted. I can read it right now if you want. Thank you for yeah. contacting the United States Postal Service and taking the time to share your it's concerns with us. Your inquiry has been processed <laughs> and signed to service request number whatever. Oh, God. Do you want me to read these? I can read them all if you want. That's your initial contact. <laughs> yeah, give me the one where they actually say something. <laughs> yeah, that's all it says. That's all they've given me. The, uh, the other took, one says – It took uh, them a dear, week to send me. you an initial contact? Oh, man, uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, and then it says this message is to let you know that we have received your inquiry at the United oh, States Postal yeah. Service. This is our government I'll at work? To, I'll That's talk it. to you offline. It's it, it, hold on. All right, you can find us online <laughs> at richdickman.com for all your Rich Dickman needs. Click that merch tab. Get yourself some awesome merch. We've got T-shirts up there, Rich Dickman T-shirts, old Hulhauser T-shirts and stickers, all sorts of stuff. Um, and check us out on YouTube. These episodes go up on YouTube every week. Subscribe to that because I think. With Ask Producer Chris around more, we might be doing some YouTube. I know I keep saying this all the time. I would love to do more YouTube stuff. I just need someone to do it with. Yeah. Uh, All right. So thank you all for listening again. Oh, and be sure to listen to our bitches over at Not For Human Consumption. Love those guys. Shout out to them. They're recording right now. Um, Matt said maybe we should stop in, but we never kind of fixed that. Maybe maybe we'll do it. If we move to Fridays, maybe we can do like a a crossover episode. Yeah. You can send us Tag an email at show at gmail.com. Again, that voicemail number is 860-316-4776. Executive producer Randy has left social media, so you can get him on the Discord at bit.do slash trds1. You can follow producer Ryan at Ryan trds. You can follow me at Rem Dickman. Follow my mother at Rem underscore mama. And you can follow the show at Rich Dickman Show. Of course, Ask Producer Chris does not have social media he's given out. So one more time, that voicemail number is 860-316-4776. Ray, anything you want to say? Let's bring this baby home. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, I got those out of order. <sighs> oh, one last thing. We Ray and I are still working on the the um, Triple T bonus Patreon episode. So if you have any type of advice questions, uh, game related, uh, life, any type of advice questions, we're looking anything. for those. Anything. So tell your friends if you used to listen to the old show. We're gonna we're gonna do a Triple T tribute show. Okay, we're not making fun of Triple mm-hmm. T. We're doing a tribute to Triple T because it's yes. what. It's what made me. Yeah, that's it's very respectful. One hundred percent. Yeah, and, but we need lots and lots and lots of uh, uh, questions because we're kind of really good at this. Like, really yeah, we're good. super. So I'm super good at this. Ray's okay at it. All right, we have anything you want to say? Yeah, collectively, to we're really good at it. Uh, I'm I'm good. good. I think I think I got enough out. <laughs> Jeff, fun. I had, yeah, it was yeah. a good time. You know, it was first. It was the first that, like, you know, I never podcasted before. Um, I think I need to work on you know, my uh, organization and speaking. Uh, but maybe one day. You want to come back sometime? Yeah. Yeah. Did you have fun? Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. All right. And if anyone has any questions, you know, they can put that post me. Do you remember what it is yet? Uh, no. No. Good night, everybody. <laughs> See you.
Oh man, that was a shit show. I mean, that was, was like the easiest episode show. we've ever done. Yeah. Easy, too easy. I think I think we've done like thirty minutes of it. <laughs> the rest of it's technical difficulties. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like two happened? hours of recording. I've lost episodes. Hugh and I recorded one that his gain was all screwed up in his microphone. Yeah. I couldn't use it. We had to do it all over again. We had, we, it was episode eleven. Was, it, was he like we super had, crackly almost? Yeah, it, it was. It was way over, way overpowered. Yeah. And he's, I'm like, dude, what the hell did you do? Oh, I got something stuck in my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, th- thanks for coming by, Casey. We're here uh, usually Thursday nights, but you know, feel free to stop yeah, in, man. It's good. If you talk to anybody uh, else nice who used to listen to Triple T, tell them about TRDS. You know, I, I could use another couple listeners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're unmuted if you feel like chatting now, but uh, yeah, man, good, good. Yeah. Thanks for the voicemail. And uh, like I said, man, keep keep on keep on trucking. You're, uh, you know, we we got to get the people. Good people need to be good people. Don't can't get discouraged by uh, the the oh, the few people Jesus. saying saying there's too many too many bad. Everyone's bad. You gotta stay Love strong, you, Casey. It's just like uh, what, just like what? Uh, I'm sure Martin Luther King. Felt like he was uh, oh, Jesus Ray. The world against him. Will you stop? You're, you're... Jesus, just stop. That's not, that's not... These See, are I can, perfect I analogies. These are he's, perfect he's... analogies. Yeah, here, here's a way you get along with Ray. Okay, <laughs> here's why the two of you would get along fine because because <laughs> neither of you has to deal with the bullshit like I got to. Okay, because people don't come to you and tell you how wrong you are and what they didn't like. They come to me, and I got to deal with it. That's because you stuff. actually are serious. Because you're actually you know what, more or less serious. I don't give a fuck. Ray, you can ass. literally go fuck yourself. Care. Okay, you can. After exactly. I turn this off, you can. Exactly. You can. You can. Care. You can stream some BBW porn, and you can just beat off mm-hmm. in your baby's room right there. I wouldn't right? watch that. I wouldn't watch that. You know what, Ray? Be it. respectful to our guests. God damn it! Yeah. yeah See? <laughs> Thank you, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> you All know, right. you, you don't even realize. You know what happened when? Uh, so Jessica. During one of the episodes, it might have been episode 100. She was like, uh, saying, she was, uh, DMing me here in, uh, in Discord. And she's like, saying something like, Oh, well, what do you, do you, what did I, something, something where I was like, Yeah, dude. I was like, Yep. Uh, he, Rem, Rem really is a fan. Cause she, she said something. And I was like, He really is. And she's like, What about you? And I was like, Uh, I'm retired. I'm retired from that stuff. Is that <laughs> like true? deflect. Deflect, yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, because I'm like, dude, I'm not into it. It is what it is, right? <laughs> to each his own. But I'm like, I, I prefer other stuff. Again, you like it, you know, more power to you. Do I like it? No. Uh, and uh, but I had to try and deflect, and she was, she laughed at least. Uh, but I tried to deflect back to you, and I was like, but you know, my buddy Rim, he's uh, he's a big fan. So why don't you? Uh, I was telling somebody. It's it's sixty percent real and forty percent bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sixty forty split. That's a real thing. 